Hello, hello, welcome to a new video. So, as you may be able to see, we are back with the cabin project. I said I would be back with some bonus steps and I am going to deliver. So, we're just gonna just jump straight into it, I think. Let's not mess about. What we're going for is this. So, hopefully you can see, but there is a nice, subtle, uh, little flickering effect going on with that window. If we just move in a little bit closer, you should be able to see that that's happening. So you can see that it's just looking like there's a light behind that that's flickering and it looks beautiful, even if I say so myself. So in this first part of the bonus steps, we're going to get this working. So you can see I've already made like a, an example. And what I'll do is I'll go back to the original shader. So I'll just swap that one back in. And that's what we had originally. So we need to get that flickering effect going on. So let's just close that one. We need to open the window material. So this is what we left off with when we made the window material originally. And what we're going to do now is just take these two nodes out here, because these are the ones going into the emissive color. We're going to bring them out because we're going to do a little bit more playing with them. So there it is. So at the moment, I'm fairly happy with this part here. This is doing what I need it to do. We have an emissive color and it's been multiplied. But what we want to do is get something to change how strong that's happening, how strong the multiplication of that value is. And so to do that, we're going to bring in a, a normal map, actually, and we're going to pan that, and you'll see how it all works. It's very clever. So first thing I'm going to do is stick in a multiply node here. There it is. Lovely, lovely. And we're going to ping this into A, and we'll, we'll connect it all up at the end. Into B, we need to do some um, cleverness. So we'll get from B and we're going to do a texture sample. Uh, where is it? There it is. And what I want is a normal map. So if we go into here, and I'm gonna go for burnt wood, just because when I tried it, I liked that one the best. So this is what it gives us. We can see the normal map there. And what I want to do is get that moving so that uh, we can have the values change and that'll make them to the minute. So into the UVs, we're going to place a panner. And the job of this node is to just move textures um, in the, kind of the X axis or the, the Y axis. So I'll just pull that out. And what we'll do, just to get this moving, we're going to just, uh, if we do one by one, just so you can see how that works. And that will pan this. But at the moment, we're not going to see anything because I don't have live nodes and live update turned on. So we'll turn that on, or both of those on. And then as this updates, you will see that this moves. There it goes. So you can see that that is now panning that texture across the, the texture space. But this won't work at the moment because it's just not strong enough. So what we're going to do is make that look a little bit bigger. So into this panner, we're going to add a uh, texture coordinate node, if I can spell it right. Texture coordinate, lovely. And then we're going to zoom right in on this texture. And the value we're gonna use, or the values we're gonna use on the tiling are 0 0.0001. So we're making it very small, which makes it really zoom in. And the same on the other one, so 0 0.0001. And when I press enter, you'll see just here, when this updates, that what it, instead of you seeing the whole texture panning across, it's just gonna look like the blue values are going up and down, which is exactly what we want it to look like. Okay, so there it is. And you can see that that is now going kind of crazy, which might be what you're going for, but I want it to be a little bit more subtle than that. So in order to change that, we're gonna go into our panner. And instead of having a speed of one, which is far too much, we're gonna have 0 0.001, I believe, 0 0.001. And then we'll let that update and we we'll, should see a more gradual changing of the blue values. Okay, so that's now updating and I can see that the blue values are changing, but I don't think they're really changing quickly enough for me. So I'm gonna experiment with the numbers until I find something I like. Okay, so with a bit of experimentation, I've put in values of 0 0.007 into the speed X and the speed Y, 
and I'm happier with the way that these values are changing. I think that's going to look quite good when we put it all together. Okay, so what I want to do now, we can see that this is all going into here, and I want to see how that's going to look. Uh, and I'll give you a hint, it's going to look wrong, but I'll explain why. So what I'm going to do is go to this multiply node, and I'm going to start previewing that node, which should put that value up here. And you can see what's happening is that instead of just raising or lowering the intensity of that emissive value, it's just mixing the colours. So we're getting reds, blues, greens. It doesn't look very good. I don't like it. So the reason for that is because we're mixing all three channels. And all we want are the values from the blue channel. So instead of going from this value here, this output, we're going to go to the blue one and put that in B instead. And then when that updates and we see it up here, what you should see is that we're just starting to get that flickering effect. So the strength of it may not be right yet, but the effect is actually happening. So what we'll do now is just stop previewing this and we're going to put this now into the emissive color to replace what we had connected before and this will then show us what it's going to look like as a finished material okay so we can now see that that's happening but we need to go into the level and see how well that's happening if it's something that we want or if we need to tweak it a little bit so let's save that and then we'll go out into the level and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to dock this window up here. Zoom out a little bit to see if this effect is strong enough. Um, it's actually not bad. I might want to just dial it up a little bit. But overall, I'm quite happy. That's not a bad, a bad outcome really, is it? So I think what I'm going to do is this multiply here. I'm actually going to tone this down. Because I don't want it to be really bright all the time. So I'm going to bring this down to about 5. And that means that now this emissive effect is not going to be very strong at all. But we're going to supercharge this side of the equation here. So I'm going to put in a new multiply. Multiply. And so the result of that is going to go into B. And our blue value is going to go into A of this new multiply. And then what we're going to do is multiply this by about 12. And I might come back and change this value. But we'll go with 12 for now. And then we'll see how that comes out. Okay, so it's definitely doing something. Let's go save it back out to the level. And see if we prefer this outcome to the previous one. I do. So I think what it's done now is it's made it brighter overall. And that means that up here we can see that that value is dropping up and down which gives the effect, hopefully, that there's some kind of fire burning in there and that will work with the, the smoke coming out of the chimney. So, that brings us to the end of this first step. It's very exciting getting back into this project. Um, so, there are two, maybe three more of these steps that we'll do, uh, and then I'm going to leave this cabin project alone and we'll move on to something completely different, which will be exciting. So, um, thanks for sticking with me for this one, and I will see you very soon for another one. Bye Zs. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.